Let's compare what I've got up in here. Make sure you come up with the same thing and we'll take it from there. All right, so we'll try to get this done as quick as we can. That way we give you as much time in here to ask questions. We always try to give you time in class to ask questions. Obviously some days we have more, sometimes we don't have very much. And we want to try to maximize the amount of time that we have in this short period. I'll shut up now and get right to it. You ready? Here we go, negative one, x minus four, x minus one, x plus five. So as we saw yesterday, if we take a look at the degree in here, you got an x, an x, and an x. If you were to multiply all this stuff out, you're gonna end up with an x to the power of three, so it's got a degree of three. Are we in agreement with that? Yes. Okay, so again, right now, right, I'm gonna be saying, hey, okay, we're in agreement with this, right. If you're sitting there saying, no, I'm not in agreement with that, no, I don't know, I don't know, I'm not confident with, with how they can tell this, how he can say that that is the situation, that what you're going to do, of course, that's that's your that's what you're going to do. you're going to say. All right, in a second, when I when we're when we're done with this, you're going to come up with your question, and we'll, we'll just spend a few more minutes, right, to make sure you're convinced that I can look at this and say when I multiply all this stuff, stuff out, I'm going to get end up with an x at some point being multiplied by an x and another one. That's how I know it's going to end up being an x cubed, and because it's an x cubed, we've got a degree of three. And behaviors for degree of three opposite directions. So it does this or it does this. It all now depends on that leading coefficient. And there is that leading coefficient right there. Yes? You multiply all this out, you would start with a negative x cubed if we were to do that. If we actually have to do it to convince you, let me know and we will do that. So because we have a leading coefficient that's negative at the extreme left hand side, that's going to end up going uh, up forever, and at the extreme right, it's going to end up going down forever. And I think I have that right because I have to do this opposite from you guys right now. Yeah? Okay. So there's your extreme uh, right. It's going down forever, and at the extreme left, it's going up forever. And that's how I know right off the bat that it's going to look something like that. Okay. At least the extreme. So the extreme right is going to head down forever. And at the extreme left, it's going to head up forever. Okay? So we're in agreement with that. If you're not in agreement with me, you're going to let me know. Yes? You're going to let me know if you're not in agreement with me about that. I'm not confident with how we can make that claim. Okay, what do we got to do next? We got to take a look at the x intercepts. So with the x intercepts, our y value, of course, is equal to zero. So there's your quick little heading, your quick little title, right? X intercepts our y value is zero when we're on the x-axis. So we have our equation. This is why we need this in factor form, right? We need this in factor form so we can easily figure out where the x-intercepts are going to occur because any one of those factors, if it gives us a zero, there's our x-intercept. So the x minus four, we set our y value equal to zero. And the x minus four could be zero. The x minus one could be zero. The x plus five was equal to zero. And as you can see from those, we're gonna end up with x intercepts located at four, one, and negative five. Fantastic, fantastic. So we know where those x intercepts are going to be. They're going to be one over here at four. We'll have another one here at one. We'll have another one over here at negative five. So we've got our x-intercepts and we also know how this has got to pass or that it's going to be uh, at the end behaviors again, the distal thing up to the left, down to the right. So now we got to connect these up. At this point, virtually, there's only one way that this could happen, right? You can connect these up and you'll know how it's going to connect up to really confirm and to get a little bit more uh, uh, data about this, a little bit more information. We can easily, right? None of these calculations are difficult to do. Let's figure out where the y-intercept is. The y-intercept is going to be our on the y-axis, meaning your uh, x value is equal to zero. So again, all we had to do is take our equation and plot zero into this. So zero minus four will give us negative four. Zero minus one will give us negative one. Zero plus five will give us five. And if we do this, we came up with a y-intercept located at negative 20. So from my little sketch up above it here, I know I'm going to be passing through the y-axis down here at negative 20. And all we have to now do is to take these points and connect them up. Yes? I've done that here, and there's only one way you can connect them up. If I've got to go through negative 5, and obviously I'm coming up from above in here, we've got to go through negative 5, we've got to go through that y-intercept, we've got to come up through this um, uh, x-intercept at 1, we've got to peak over here someplace, and then go through 4, and that will allow us to continue downward. 
So if all that information is correct, there's only one way to draw that. Okay? There's only one way that you could possibly draw that. Now, big question always is, you know, I put in the dashed lines in here, right? Because again, I don't know how high I'm going or how low I'm going with those peaks or those, uh, those minimum values. I don't, so I always like to put them in as dashed lines. Right? Someone this morning said to me, well, if I put it in as a solid line, right? So I said, okay, go ahead, because we're sketching this, yes? And it is a sketch, because I'm not asking you to graph this. If this were a graph, you'd have your grid and you'd know exactly where one and two and three and four and five is, so maybe that would be saying that the y value there is five or something. And then I'd look at this point if it were a graph and I would be able to tell where the x value is. Because it's a sketch, I'm not giving you that information, so we don't have to worry about it. So if you're going to put in a complete solid line in here, I'm not going to hold it against you. We just don't know. That's why I like to put it in as a dotted line. All right. And we got it sketched. And of course, there's my equation. Because we always want to put the equation in on that. There it is right at the bottom. All right. Can we take a quick look at the other one? And again, as soon as we got the other one done, you know which ones we asked you to start working on. I'll put the numbers back on there. In fact, I'll give them to you right now. All right, and then uh, and then it's hey, you're not convinced of anything that we just spoke about. You come up and see me, and we'll convince you. All right, we will convince you. Yes, we will. All right, I won't give you bad advice. Just like I told you, don't take uh, math or science, anything really really heavy like that. It takes a lot of time and effort. Don't do that in summer school or night school. I would not recommend that at all. I'm not going to tell you something I wouldn't tell my own kids, and that's exactly what I told my two daughters. I said, no way, when they were in high school, and they said, uh, you know, I don't want to do something in the summer, you know, we'll get a spare or whatever, and you know, I can do math, but should you get out of here? So don't show them the door right there, and they're, they get lost. No way. No way. I'm not going to tell you anything I wouldn't tell you. You're sort of my extended family. You're sort of my extended family. Right. When you're in here, I ain't going to give you bad advice. Yeah. And you know what? Sometimes that advice is. Sometimes that advice is kicking me in the butt too. Eh? Okay. Okay. Because you know what? If everything, oh, that's okay. That's okay. That's okay. No, it's not okay. Get your butt in gear and get some work done. And that's the good advice I tell them, and I've given them in the past, and I'll do the same thing for you. I'm not going to just, you know, whitewash everything and say, oh, it's okay, it's all right. Okay, try to do a little bit more. No, get some more done. Okay. Right? Next slide. Two B, let's do more through real quick, and then we maximize our time. And then, and then again, you got a question with how I'm coming up with two B in here? Hey, you're gonna you're gonna say, hey, let's have a look at it a little bit more, a little bit more closely. Right. So uh, there were the questions. I have them on the screen right now. 3.3 numbers 1, 4, 6, 9, and 10. Can we just point out question number 9? Okay, you got to factor those yourself then. Yes? I think it's question number 9. Pretty sure it's question number 9. If you got there already, or if you haven't, whatever, they give you a question, an equation like this. And of course, we're basing it upon all this wonderful information that we get by factoring this. Yes? So all these equations basically are factored for you, except that number 9. Don't come up to me later and say, well, how do I do number nine? Okay, well, what did we just do, right, in our last unit? We took one of these polynomial equations and we used the factor theorem. We found a number that makes it equal to zero. Why? That gives us one of the factors and then we ended up using the long division. Yes? All right, so don't get fooled by that. Number nine is gonna look something like this. Okay, wait a second, I need to know the factors and everything, because right now, what do you know? You know it's a cubic, right, third degree. Your leaning coefficient is positive, right? The other good thing it tells you in this case is, uh, and if this were your question, there is your y-intercept, yeah? All right, so that's great because it already tells you the y-intercept. You know what your uh, your degree is, you know your leading coefficient is one, so you can get a little bit of information there. And what do we still need to know? We still gotta figure out the x-intercepts. How do you find the x-intercept in solving this equation? So you do have to use the factor theorem and the law division, okay? So if you really think about that, right, that's a fantastic question to give you, right? Think about it, right? From my end, this is a fantastic question to give you, written like this, and I say to you, sketch this, right? Because you gotta do everything that we just did with the last one. Agreed, all right? 
Plus, on top of that, you've got to break that down yourself. So this question in here covers the long division, covers the factor theorem, and covers all the factoring stuff that we've been talking about, and also talks about what the degree is and what the end behaviors are. That covers so much all in one question. So from my end, that's a great question, right? Because I can, you know, I can cover a whole bunch of different topics in there with that one question from your end, you know, you hate that because you have to do so much for it and it covers so much, right? So you can understand from my end, I love that question because you gotta do so much in order to get to the answer. Okay, 2B, let's take a quick look at 2B. Now 2B has both a double and triple root. So would you be in agreement with me? Hey, we've got an x squared in here. Yes? We've got an x squared in there. So from that, we're going to end up with a double root. You've got the x minus 6. And you can see I put the 1 in front of the x just to make it clear that there's a 1 in there. Uh, the 1x minus 6 to the power of 3, you get a triple root there. Yes? So we got a triple root, and we got to have a double root going on. So when we look at this, hey, I've got an x squared, and then with this x minus 6, become, because I'm keeping that, this will give us an x cubed being multiplied by an x squared. That means that your degree is going to be 5. So we've got an odd degree going on. Okay? So again, right now, you're sitting there, and I'm saying, all right, look at that. Hey, degree is 5. Fantastic. And you're sitting there, and you're saying, yeah, I'm not confident in why the degree is 5. You're going to let me know. Yes? just a few moments in here when we're done this you're going to say all right you're going to come up here and then i can i can i got paper up here whatever and i will make sure that you are crystal clear on how we can easily claim that this is going to be five and i'm saying easily claim for me i think most of us are good with that if you're not part of that group we will make it easy for you to be convinced that the degree is five the leading coefficient i claim is positive you do have a one here yes positive one and when I have this x in here, or a 1x, you got a 1x times a 1x times a 1x, you'll end up with a 1x cubed with a 1x to the power of 2. We're going to end up with a 1x to the power of 5. And hence, our leading coefficient, I really don't care that it's 1. I'm more interested in the fact that it's positive. So it's odd degree with positive. That means at the extreme right, at the extreme right, it is going to be going up forever and at the extreme left, it's going to be going down forever. Agree? So we know what this goal move is going on with an odd degree and a leading coefficient that's positive. To the right, it's going to be going upwards forever. And I state that. So we state it quickly. At the extreme right, we head to positive infinity. And at the extreme left, we're going to head to negative infinity. All right? Okay, I got the graph coming up there, so I'm quickly going to bypass that. And let's go next. What are we going to do? We're going to figure out the x-intercepts. So with our x-intercepts, again, what's happening? Our y value is equal to zero. So we've got this x squared times an x minus 6 cubed. It's going to have a y value equal to zero. So again, I put that in brackets here, this x squared. To further emphasize that I'm going to get the solution from this x and it is being squared, so hence it's a double root. The x minus 6 is being cubed, we got a triple root. Now remember what happens with a double and a triple root, yes? A double root, like a parabola, you're going to hit the x axis and you stay on the same side. You hit it and you stay on the same side, so it's going to look something like this at uh, 0. When you hit 0, it's either going to do this and stay above it or it's going to be staying below it. It acts like a parabola, right? It's a double root. It's being squared. Yes? That even looks like a parabola, doesn't it, if I just look at that? And what is, again, what's going to happen with the parabola? It hits it, but it stays on the same side. So that's what's going to happen at 0. And then with the triple root over here, because the x minus 6 is being tripled, so when we come up with our... Um, our uh, uh, x-intercept of uh, 6, you know what happens? Bon Jovi, Aerosmith, I don't know. You guys probably don't listen to anything of that, do you? All right, hey, classic rock kind of stuff, although best rock group ever, the Beatles, followed by U2. But anyway, we don't have to discuss that right now. Uh, what's going to happen with the triple root? Dagger through my heart, yes? No, it won't go right through it. So over here at 6, 
there's your right center step. It ain't going to be doing this. It ain't going to be doing that. Remember what happens with a triple root. You will be passing through it, but it's going to pass through it by doing something like this. Right? It's going to come up and it's going to be a glancing blow. It's like a death by a thousand cuts, eh? Right? It's not that dagger going through. You've got to kind of glance through it. Please excuse the interruption. Ms. Regal, please do your period one attendance. Thank you. You know what I'm going to do one day? We were talking about this at lunch yesterday. You know what I'm going to do just to mess them up with those announcements? I'm going to miss my attendance all day. Purposely. So they'll call down period one, Mr. Gerardo, your attendance. Period two, Mr. Gerardo, your attendance. Period three, Mr. Gerardo, your attendance. I'm just going to do that. It's so annoying to listen to all of them. So I really mean it. Try to get to organize the whole staff to do it. Anyway. So a triple root, that's not the dagger is going to glance through it, yes? All right? Okay, so x is equal to 6 and x is equal to 0. We're going to have those two x-intercepts. So let me do this really quick. So we'll start the sketch in here because I don't want to do the whole thing. I've got, I don't want to show you the whole thing. we got 1 and 6 and we got 1 and 0 over here. You know what the fantastic thing about this one right over here is? Right? This 1 and 0? If your x-intercept is 0, it automatically tells you your y-intercept is 0 as well, right? Agree? You already know where your y-intercept is there. So technically, you don't even have to figure that out because you actually know where it is. So we got x-intercepts at 0 and 6. You got the double and your triple one. And just to confirm, there's my y-intercept of 0 because we set the x-value to be equal to 0 because that's what's happening when you're on the y-axis. Your, y, your x-value is equal to 0. So I think we, if we plug that in, we plug 0 into this. Um, we end up coming up with a negative 6 cubed, but since you're multiplying that by the 0 squared, it's automatically equal to 0. So technically, you wouldn't even have to show that to me, right? Agree? Because you already know where it is. So if you did show me the y-intercept, I couldn't dock you on any marks, right? If I tried, you'd say, hey, wait a second, though. No, I, I already know the y-intercept in here because of the fact the x-intercept is equal to 0. All right? So what was happening here as well? You guys got it in front of me, in front of you, sorry. Uh, what was happening at the extreme right? Was it going up or down for us? I don't remember, what was it? Up, up. so it's gonna do this at the extreme right. And at the extreme left, it is an odd degree, so it has to be going down forever, yeah? All right, now, again, what was zero? Zero was a double root, yeah? So again, at zero, what's it gonna do? It's gonna either do this, it's gonna hit it and stay above, or it's gonna hit it and stay below. Yeah? So what happens at a double root? Can you tell what's going to happen in here? Which one is it going to be? Is it going to hit zero and stay above it, or is it going to be zero and stay below? With the fact that you've got to go down towards negative infinity in here, and moving from left to right, that's your first x-intercept over here in zero. How am I going to draw this? In? There's really no choice at this point. It's got to be below, because listen, if you're coming down here, and there's my x-intercept, and I'm not going to go through it because it's a double root. There's no choice, right? Because I can't draw it above. If I try to draw it above, if you think it's going to do this over here, but wait a second, got to head down towards negative infinity. Hey, at some point you'd be crossing the x-axis over here, yes? And there isn't an x-intercept over here. So this isn't an option for us. That's not an option for us. So really, it's kind of telling you that it has to be below there. And where else do we have one? We've got the one at 6. That's that triple root. So at some point in here, i got to bottom out because i got to loop back over here. And I've got to go through this as a glancing blow, so to speak. And there it is, not as a dagger, but as that glancing blow. And just that quick and easy, we've got this thing sketched. Now again, quick and easy. All right, quick and easy. But if you don't don't see what's going on in there, then you're going to be seeing me, and you can see that I came up with the same sketch over here. It's got to come down or from the bottom in here, staying on the same side because there is no other x intercepts over here. It's going to loop around here someplace, and then with that triple root, we get that kind of you know it's like a sideways S kind of shape in there. Right? It's that glancing blow. It's that glancing blow. <laughs> All right? 
So there's number two. We asked you to work on that last night so we could have a quick look at it. And I'm hoping that you already got started with some of the other questions. Yes? All right. And the other questions were 1, 4, 6, 9, and 10. 1, 4, 6, 9, and 10. Can I tell you something about number four? Because I'm getting this question a lot from the other class. All right. We just take a quick look at question number four. And I'm going to save you a little bit of grief. We're going to save a bunch of us some grief in here. Okay? Ready? So when you write these questions, right, or sorry, write these questions, when you write these equations in factor form, let me put a bunch up here for you real quick. Let's write some examples here, okay? And you've got some, you know, obviously, the other questions. So let me just do this. Uh, you've got some examples of these, right? You've got, I don't know, 3, x plus 4, x minus 1 squared. There's an example of one of our polynomials in factor form. Question number four. Question number four, they come along and they do this, right? They do this, they give you the actual graph. So I'm just gonna sketch something in here, right? Just making one up right now. Da -da, da -da, da -da, there it is. Okay, so let's assume that this is, I don't care what these numbers are right now. Let's just assume that this was it. Okay. Right? So number four, they give you an actual graph. They give you the graph at number four. Yes? And they say come up with the equation. Okay. So obviously here you know that this is going to be a degree that's uh, odd. Yes. And you're going to have an x-intercept here and here and here. Yes. So you can start coming up with the equation in here. Uh, because it's a minus seven in here, you'd end up with an x plus seven. Uh, with the two, you'd end up with minus two, and with the ten, you'd end up with x minus ten. So far, so good. We're all in agreement? Okay. Now, um, with this now, you're still not finished, right? Because, hey, here are examples of some, right? Uh, lead coefficient, three, yeah? Lead coefficient here would be negative two. Uh, here, lead coefficient looks like it's gonna be a one in here, yeah? Right? So put that in. If you just leave it like this, if you just leave it like this, you're telling me that the number in front here has to be a one, and that would be a huge assumption on our part. Okay? Do you actually know what the number in front here is going to be? No, you don't. You can figure it out though. Yeah? So are we in agreement? Are we in agreement that you're going to have some number, right? Some number in front here. Yeah? Now it could be three, could be negative two, could be a one. I don't know what it is. You gotta figure it out. So do you know what that number is right now? And the answer is no. And if I don't know what it is, you know what I'm going to do over here? Call it a number like A. Yes? How can you be sure what that number A is? Right now, the only thing you can tell me for sure is that A, in this case, would have to be positive. Yes? Because to the right we're going up forever, to the left we're going down forever. Right? But is that a positive one? Is it a positive two? Is it a positive 1.75? Is it a positive 53? I don't know. So in question number four, you know what they do? Is they give you another point on this curve someplace. At some point they can tell you, hey, you know what? There's another point over here. There's another point over here. I'm just making this one up completely, you ready? So maybe this point is seven minus three. Note that in question number four there on page 146, do you see that, that they actually, in both of those, in A and B, that they actually list another point? Yes? And why do they give you the other point? Because now, now, if I take this point and substitute it in for x and y, what can I now figure out? The value of x. The only thing you can be sure of right now is that this has an A value, this first number in front is going to have to be positive. So you can now figure out exactly what it's going to be because all you have to do now is to substitute in 7, negative 3 into the equation. 
So we're going to plug 7, or sorry, we're going to plug negative 3 into your y value. You don't know what a is. Uh, I think about this. Seven. Oh yes, okay, sorry, I'm just looking at the, the seven in there. I'm gonna put in seven into my x value, seven into the x value, seven into the x value. So you're gonna end up with 14, you'll end up with five, you'll end up with negative three. You can now figure out what your a value is because it's a simple little equation to solve. Yes? All right? So there's question number four. So I'm assuming you would have figured that out, but just in case, because I had a lot of people asking me about that uh, this morning, about question number four. So let's save ourselves a little bit of grief and let's point out what I was hoping was going to be the obvious, but it maybe it wasn't so obvious. So we'll point it out to everybody right now. You can now figure out what that A value is. Yes? If that's giving you trouble, and if the O2 that we just did in number two is giving you any trouble, whatever's giving you trouble, now is the time to let me know. Yes? So we're working on one, four, six, number nine. You gotta factor that yourself. And we also have question number 10 to have a look at, ladies and gentlemen. I don't know what time this class is over, I can tell you. It's 11.20, which gives us just over 20 minutes right now. So if you got anything that needs a little bit further clarification, you're gonna let me know, yeah? Yes? Yes, sir. 1120. Sorry. Let me, let me clarify. 1210. 1210. I was looking at the wrong clock. 1210. 